This podcast does not constitute an endorsement by the United States Army or Department of Defense. Welcome back to the Soldier for Life podcast, and I'm your host, Lieutenant Colonel Olivia Nunn, and welcome to season six. And I'm opening up this season with something new, unique, and different. And today I have the pleasure to be able to speak with the founder of Warrior Poet Society, Mr. John Lovell. Some of our listeners actually are quite familiar with you, and for those that don't, they're going to find out about you. John, thank you so much for spending your afternoon with your very busy schedule that you have with Soldier for Life. Welcome. Thanks for having me on. John, so for our listeners, Warrior Poet Society, um, I guess the intro is my husband is a huge fan and he's bummed that he wasn't able to be here today and say hello to you. And he's been a fan of yours for a while and he's been listening and you have a a very large video uh, presence and you have your own network. Um, But what brought me to you and I thought would be really unique if you could be on the show is you did this video about bugging in and I died laughing on that video. I thought it was so funny, but I so understood it. So what is that video? That video was about you and your family. And because we're military, right? We have a military background. The thing I should mention is John is a, is an army veteran. And we always talk about that worst case scenario planning. If something happens, event X. And so you take all your equipment and all your tactical stuff and you bug out. And we realize that when you have a family that's not military and you have kids, you can't exactly do that. And I loved that video. And I just knew that I wanted to bring you on the show and just to really talk about what Warrior Poet Society is all about. Can you tell us what it is and how did you get there? How did you go from exiting the army and then coming to this dream of yours at Warrior Poet Society? Sure. And Olivia, that skit we did before that video. Oh, so fun. We were rolling on the floor laughing. And so I'm trying to be a good actor and I'm not a very good actor. So I rely on a lot of takes and just like, all right, stone cold face, do the part. And I was supposed to you know, all of a sudden we get uh, this news clip for those people who haven't seen the video, a real quick rundown of the skit that started that bug in versus bug out video. Uh, something horrible came over on the news and it was our newscaster. So it was all fake and put on. And I'm like, oh, no, we're bugging out. And I went and grabbed my bug out bag and I was ready. And my wife is like, well, where's my bug out bag? What about the kids? And you could tell I'd never thought about it. And so uh, we ended up bugging in because... Uh, and uh, it was a real fun unraveling, but that skit was real fun. So uh, I can't not go there once you bring it up. But uh, you uh, it's asked so about transition. Funny. I love it. I love it. And um, yeah, so thanks for doing that, because I think it really opened up um, and really kind of digging more into who you are and what Warrior Poet Society is. Well, and so it, we're a serious movement uh, at our core. We're, we're really about living for higher purpose, being ready to sacrifice in the defense of others. But that doesn't mean we get we don't have senses of humor along the way. And we like to have a lot of fun and we're just pretty normal people. I mean, I, once upon a time, I jumped out of airplanes and did cool guy stuff over in the desert or whatever. It wasn't cool doing it. You know, you watch the army commercial and you're like, oh, I'm going to do that. And then you go do exactly what was in the commercial. And I'm like, I didn't, I thought it would be cooler. It's cool looking back and it's cool looking forward. But when you're doing it and having to embrace the suck, not quite as, uh, not quite as awesome. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, so John, can you share with us what you did in the army and um, what was your transition? Yeah, for sure. I was an army ranger. So I uh, went into the military uh, option 40. I ended up going through RIP, Ranger Indoctrination Program, back before it was terribly renamed RASP, Ranger Assessment and Selection Program. Really bad move, guys. But RIP and Airborne and all that stuff went to 2nd Ranger Battalion. And that's where I spent all my time uh, in the military. And uh, I was in airborne hold, so almost jump school when the towers fell. And so as soon as I got to Ranger Battalion, they immediately packed me for war and sent me across the pond. And then that would, uh, uh, from there, I would go four more times. So I did a total of five combat tours. And uh, my whole, the whole leadership in my platoon ended up 
getting pretty burned out on war. Some guys stayed in and they're still friends. Just talked to one of them last night. Uh, ended up doing about 15 tours. So I'm like, man, alive. Uh, but uh, anyway, got out of the military and then I was faced with this difficulty of, all right, well, what now? And I went back to college and I ended up getting a degree. And that was a real weird thing is just your life experiences and how I saw the world and maturity level. It was just way different. I was also in the market for a, a Mrs. Lovell. I wanted a wife, you know, and I didn't get one when I ETS the military. They weren't at the PX or anything. Dumb joke. Come on, John. Uh, fun dad jokes. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Lauren so said I was, that I was issue to him. So I think we get that. We met right at the beginning of our career. So I, we, we get it. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, anyway, so I went to uh, military to college. I ended up working different jobs and uh, Warrior Poet Society would start years after. I didn't go straight to it. It was something that it's not as much like this masterminded vision that I had. I'm sure God had that in mind. I didn't. I just kind of bumbling around until I stumbled upon something and I'm kind of looking around left and right. I'm like, nobody's doing this. This should be done. Someone should do this. And then it was like, I should do this. And then behold, the Warrior Poet Society, here we are. And we're uh, got a big following. And there's, it turns out there's a lot of people out there, whether they're military, vets, or never touch service at all. They're a lot like me. They see the world like I do. They're protectors of people, right? And uh, they live for higher purpose. And uh, they're just trying to be good people, good dads. They're trying to be uh, a, a strong uh, masculinity and they embody our ethos. And so it stuck well and uh, we've got some good momentum. So in, in that culture, in that brand that you have for Warrior Poet Society, um, are you a, an organization where it's giving back through the community? Is it teaching? Is it a little bit of both? What is it that Warrior Poet Society really excels besides making really cool videos? Thank you for saying my videos are really cool. I appreciate that. Every time someone says like, oh, what do you uh, what do you do for a living? I answer them every single time a different way. It's a little bit difficult because we just do so much and so many different things. On the one hand, we have our media content creation stuff. So YouTube, we have a real a, a pretty good following on YouTube. We also have our network, which we make shows and also have my online training classes there. And we're adding to that all the time. We've got a cool couple cool shows coming out uh, with some uh, uh, former Marine, another one with a, a former Navy SEAL and Spook. Real cool stuff coming down the pipeline, but there's content creation. And then we're in the social media sphere of the Instagram and Facebook and all that uh, jazz. So we make content. We also do training. So I travel around the country and I, we've got some other trainers now as well and in the market uh, for some even more if they can kind of fit our ethos and all the little checklists that I have. So we do uh, training, gun gun stuff or medical stuff, some tactics stuff. So training. Uh, we also have a full website with a brand and we've got all kinds of curated products, whether it's cool guy knives and body armor and war belts and all backpacks. And of course our shirts and blah, blah, blah. We've got a whole bunch of that stuff. And so, uh, yeah, we, we're also giving back, not just employing 20 different people now already, and we're growing all the time. Uh, but we're a giving organization. Uh, that's a, a piece of who we are, myself, my, uh, the other owner of the society. We give generously. We also support a bunch of Second Amendment advocacy groups with both financing and press. And so we're kind of really behind the scenes there and also vocally uh, out there giving the message of First and Second Amendment advocacy through our media channels. So, uh, yeah, we're pro-veteran, obviously veteran owned. And so, yeah. So when you transitioned from the army and you said, you know, you did a few things and then you got to the creation of Warrior Poet Society, did you ever think that your transition from the army would have led you to this in, in the way that you are growing and shaping your community? No, that, no, no. Uh, maybe something like this ish, but uh, I mean, no. I would love to say yes, of like I masterminded it all. And I didn't. I went to I went to school and I got a degree and 
I uh, started a different company that wasn't in tactics or guns at all. I uh, did some time as a Christian missionary, and that's where I really learned how to teach is uh, uh, teaching kind of theology, Christian worldview, philosophy, all kinds of stuff like that to college students. And I did that for years overseas. And uh, so uh, then I also worked a different training job as a lead instructor, doing mainly night vision stuff and low light tactics and some uh, pistol rifle stuff as well. And then Warrior Poet Society was born more of as I was looking out there and exploring all the weird ways that the internet has changed how we do life and assimilate information, I was seeing kind of like this uh, tough guy persona of the, the gunish, the gun guy. And it's, uh, it was cool, but it was a little bit inflated with a false bravado. And I'm kind of like, you know what, the most dangerous people I know in the world. And I know a lot of extremely dangerous people from all my time in you know, special operations and just rubbing shoulders in this industry. You meet a lot of pretty dangerous people and they're usually the nicest people you ever meet. They're super nice, you know, (laughs) Uh, or they're sadists. It's usually one of the two. <laughs> it's just extreme pendulums. But anyway, of uh, what I what I wanted to avoid is what I saw so many of my brothers in arms go through that they would be wonderful successes at war and excel in the military just to get back and fail at life. It's like you spend this time overseas fighting for this cause, and then when you get home, you don't actually keep that cause. You and your wife separate and your kids are on visitation and it's it can be extremely disheartening. And so I think for the longevity of the soldier and for the purity of cause, we need to be able to maintain healthy relationships. And that means good be good spouses and good parents and good neighbors and good friends and good co-workers or bosses and just do well at life. So uh, that my transition was a pretty strange beeline where I'm just going all over the place and picking stuff up and clues along the way. And I wanted to be able to help folks as a call to arms and say, hey, you, you leave the military, you're, you're called to a new mission now and you need to adapt, improvise and overcome. Uh, and you can't treat a, you can't treat people, a civil, you can't treat civilians the same way you treated your, uh, your buddies overseas, you know, (laughs) you can't do that. You can't treat your employees the way you treated the people in your squad or platoon. You can't lead exactly like that. And so, uh, it is important to me to produce well-balanced warriors and poets as I think we're all called to be lions for sure, protectors, but also to be lambs. You got to be uh, wonderful fighters, but also, you know, that romantic and vulnerable lover as well. That's part of masculinity. That's part of just being a, a good human. So it's lovers and fighters, warriors and poets. So based on that description, it seems like your audience that you're really trying to communicate with and reach out to are the men to be these uh, these warriors and these poets that you say. Uh, but some of your content does include your wife, like the one about getting her excited about having her own weapon and shooting. I just recently saw that video and, um, you know, how you get your spouse into that. And that's something that, again, my husband and I really enjoyed because that's something that we we do as well. We go to the range together. And, um, you know, I have a couple of my own weapon systems that I just recently purchased that I was super excited about. Uh, but so where does the the warrior poet and, and call to arms and being that protector, where does their significant other or spouse or even women who are in this industry, where do they fall in? Yeah, great question. And I mean, warrior poets are men and women. It's not just a a dude's thing, but I can't be naive to the fact that 97.2% of our analytics say that dudes are watching. So generally, I just address the dudes. And as a dude, I'm kind of an expert on what dudes think. You, you, you gals scare me. I don't know what's going on in your heads. You know, just... It's a bag of stray cats up there, isn't it, Olivia? No, just just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> if you My, knew, you would make so much money, right? That's that is the number one thing that men try to figure out: is what is going on in a woman's head. That's it. I'd say that to my wife and she would hit me and then she'd smile at me, meaning it was a good <laughs> flirt and she would appreciate that. Uh, so uh, anyway, but she's 
she knows that when I'm gone, it's up to her and I, I travel. And so she wants to be able to protect herself and our kids. And that's part of what she should be doing. She is, she needs to be a warrior as well. Not as much as me, you know, it, it's kind of like, it's something I'll major on and it's something she'll minor on. I think she's primarily called, she would say this, she's primarily called to the responsibility of nurturing our kids. Uh, whereas I'm more out outward facing, I'm kind of leading and protecting. And that's kind of what I do. And though we both share in those roles, I major on some roles where she majors on others. And so there's, there's overlap, but she's a stay at home, homeschooling mom. That's her job. That's what she does. And I have a job and I'm out and about, and, uh, I happen to deal in guns for a living. And so, uh, we both have the responsibility to be warrior poet and we don't want to parcel it out. People make this fallacy all the time of kind of like, well, what are you? Are you like 80% warrior, 20% poet? I'm like, no, 100% both. That's the big idea. You're not a soul that you can divvy out like that. It's like let ISIS tremble in their uh, sandals when they hear your name or you, they see you. Let them be horrified of you. But never let your kids be. Your kids love you. It's tickle fight time, you know, and then they, they adore you. And that's kind of the big idea. We fully maintain both. That is a really good way of explaining, you know, I think, what you're trying to be in such simple terms. And I think many, and you've done your your analytics there, is who, could, who resonates well, and obviously the military community. We talk a lot with, here at Soldier for Life, with transitioning service members. And a lot of feedback that we get at Soldier for Life is that once they've taken off the uniform and gone into their civilian life, whether it is corporate America or go back to school to get a degree or a, another degree, is that the sense of, camaraderie and the connection to something bigger and better isn't there like it was in the military and trying to find a tribe. And what we try to say is that connect in with tribes that resonate with you to give back. And it seems like you were able to come full circle once you left the military to come back to kind of your roots in the military and do something you're really passionate about, um, but leaning on the skills that you obtained through your career. What is the one single thing that you feel that you were able to really pull through from your time in the military that has really helped shape Warrior Poet Society? Oh, that's a fan qu fantastic question. I don't know. It, there's so many different pieces. I mean, the, just the leadership aspects of it as well. Here's something, and this may not be the most important thing, but it is something. I learned as a early, uh, early on junior leader coming up as a uh, buck sergeant. Uh, at, I think I was either a team leader or I was a squad leader. I was trying to motivate soldiers. And what, what surprised me is how differently some soldiers would respond. Some soldiers, I mean, you needed to kind of put the fear of God in them almost and, and just terrify them. Then you want them more scared of you than the enemy. And it's kind of light a fire under him to get him to move. And then I noticed other soldiers, it's kind of like they were so internally motivated that for you to make any kind of negative statement, they'd just be so crestfallen. They would do so much, you know, masochistic, introspective, self-course correction that you didn't need to do any, I do give them a look and they just self-correct, you know, and everyone needed to be led a little bit different. And so it began me on a path of really studying leadership and how different people respond to different carrots and different sticks. And so that was an early on clue. One of the big things that would probably, the best advice I could probably give to people that are trying to transition is the world is not going to cater or pander to you and how you think it should be. And it could be real easy to leave the fellowship of a band of brothers and find folks and really look at some negative things that, as you would see them of like nobody's punctual and people just don't have the backbone that you would like them to have and they won't speak their mind and then they talk about you behind their back. Whatever, you can just, the list can go on and on and you'd be like, guess what, brother? That's You've got a new mission and you've got a new group around you and your job is to improvise, adapt and overcome. But the more you look 
back at how good it was. And the more bitter you become in your station in the present saying they should all be this way like me, the more you're just isolating. And even if you were right, lording that ideal over a bunch of people that are not going to change and shift to accommodate you is literally just going to guarantee that you are a failure in your next mission. And then you're going to wake up 20 years from today and realize that you haven't accomplished anything since the military. And all you do is look back on a museum of once what once was, and that's your life. Who cares about what you've done? What are you doing now? And what are you going to do tomorrow? Right? You have a lot of different people around you right now, and they are uh, uh, very different. They're weaker in some ways and stronger in other ways. And you need to be able to learn to love them and do well and take care of the boys as different as they may seem, because the world's not going to shift to you. You've got to adapt to them, right? So it seemed a little harsh, but I know my audience here, and it comes from a really good place of, I want nothing but good for you, military veteran. Only with deepest respect and affection do I, do I say stinging words. No, but I think sometimes tough love is the way you have to help people shift and grow. And I, you know, we hear it from many different people. You know, there's a pretty big presence that Soldier for Life has on LinkedIn. And there's a lot of networking that happens on that, that single network. And there's a lot of experts, if you will, that have done well through their transition. And they like to give back in imparting their knowledge in their own transition story. And time and time again, we hear those same themes that echo through is that enjoy what you have, but be mindful of the present, you know, be happy with what you've been able to attain and achieve and take those lessons forward. And that it's a different environment instead of, and it's in a different, a different adventure and to look at it as such. So I think you're spot on, right? And sometimes you just have to hear it with a little more grittier words for it to sink in. Well, you said it so much more nicely. Maybe we'll just play your clip over mine. That was fantastic. <laughs> Good job. No, thanks, John. Can you please tell me, John, what is the one last thing that you really want our audience to know about you and Warrior Poet Society? Uh, we're a resource for you. You know, we, we, we want really well-balanced folks out there. That's kind of our big stick. And we really like uh, guns and protection and uh, being harder to kill and better at doling out violence to those who would wish harm upon the innocent. Uh, we're not looking for a fight, but we're pretty good at ending them. And that's our big deal. So it's a pretty cool community, but we're, we're staying grounded enough to be applicable and good people in everyday kind of life. And so if that resonates with you, and I just encourage you to look us up, Warrior Poet Society, and you might just find a tribe you might find us. So uh, that's it. John, thank you so very much and spending your uh, time with us here at Soldier for Life. I know your schedule is jam packed and, you know, look forward to seeing more of your videos, especially the ones with your wife, because I, I you know, truly find those really, I, I understand that resonates with me. And sure. so thanks um, for providing humor um, as well as some very realistic conversational pieces. And thank you again. Uh -huh. Thank you for having me on. Once a soldier, always a soldier, a soldier for life. Yeah.